بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah most merciful and most compassionate all praise be to Allah peace and blessings be upon the prophet Muhammad and all the prophets from Adam to him peace be upon them may Allah's peace and blessings mercy and compassion upon you all my dear friends we shall continue today to reflect on the lessons that we were taking from the story that took place between deaf man and his sick neighbor. If you recall, the deaf man conjured some questions in his mind before he went to visit his ailing neighbor. Since he had a difficulty of hearing, he couldn't communicate with, with him at all. And the deaf man, with his good intention, wanted to ask his neighbor's well-being and give him moral support. But the conversation between the two did not go as planned. The deaf man thought that he had done a good job, a good gesture by visiting his neighbor, fulfilling his duty, you know, as a Muslim. And uh, left in the end neighbor's house, all with good feelings. But the sick neighbor, without knowing the condition of his visitor, visitor's deafness, wrongly assumed that his visitor came to see him, not wishing him well, but discomforting him. He saw him like as his own enemy. Because in response to his negative answers, uh, the uh, deaf man was responding positively. The sick man wrongly but unknowingly surmised that his visitor was there to demoralize him with bad words. Consequently, he got very angry and he even about to burst. Then finally he shouted at him, he said, get out. And although uh, the deaf man did, did not understand anything and he left. So he was so much happy, meaning the deaf man, by fulfilling his duty. But the sick man was so frustrated and disappointed, to say the least, with the visit of his neighbor. Memlana Muhammad Rumi affords a few moral lessons here for us to consider. He says, although there was no use of bad words between the two, but there was a misunderstanding of the words. So bad words or unpleasant words are just like bad smelling food, which spoils the stomach. It may cause you to vomit. It is exactly that. One who hears unpleasant words, bad words, is just like the one who has eaten spoiled food. Of course, this reminds us of the famous ayah in Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah Almighty warns us not to spy one another, not to accuse one another, not to gossip behind each other. And doing such gossiping and backbiting, as Quran says, is exactly as if you are eating the flesh of the dead body of your brother. So, and exactly, Mamlana Muhammad alludes to this ayah by interjecting that there was, although not use of bad words, but it was completely misunderstood by, his, by this ailing sick person. So, the second lesson that Mamlana offers us here is about the anger. And the sick man was very upset, very angry, but finally he was able to control himself. And Mevlana says, if you ever encounter in a sense with someone who is reckless and uses in this language bad words, try to control your anger. Because if you do so, in the end we may, we may receive apology from the person who is uttering bad words. And again, here is the ayah from the Quran. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَازِمِنَ الْغَيْزَ وَالْعَافِنَانَ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحَبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ 
This is Ali Imran 3, 134. Those who spend in the way of Allah, do charity during difficulty and ease. Those who restrain their anger, curb their anger, control their anger. Those who forgive the people and uh, uh, pardon the people. Allah loves these people because these are the good people. Allah loves the doors of goodness. And, but correcting someone when he makes a mistake requires also some kind of self-discipline in our behavior, in our uh, communication interaction with the person. We, we need to use very polite, courteous, gentle language if you would like to warn somebody or correct somebody. And here Mevlana interjects uh, with a hadith. And he says, when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, saw a young fellow praying in the mosque, he noticed that the prayer was not appropriate, was not correct. And what the Prophet said, Salli inna kalam tu salli ya feta. Pray, my young fellow. Indeed, you have, not, you have not prayed right. Then again he said, Gum salli fa inna kalam tu salli. Get up, pray again, you have not prayed. So this was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you know, remarks to this young, young boy. Then the boy, performed his prayer again. Finally, the Prophet said, La salata illa bi hudur al You know, prayer is not uh, complete or will not be completed without having full concentration in your heart, without feeling, in a sense, the presence of Allah Almighty, without devoting yourself to whom you are worshipping. Uh, exactly the hadith, you should pray as if you see him, although you don't see him, he sees you. So what is the purpose of prayer, Mevlana asks? It's a means of preventing difficulties, dangers. Therefore, we keep on saying every day in our prayer, guide us. Guide us, Ya Allah, ihdina, this Mevlana says, which means, O oh Allah, do not, do not mingle my prayer with the prayer of the people who, who are not really praying. So that's how we understood. So Mevlana again rewards to the story and says, Look, this fellow made a long, uh, wrong logical reasoning on the basis of his senses. A senses that we trust, senses we rely, are not always accurate. Most of the time, we, we may be misled by our senses. Look at what happened between the two. Because he thought, this deaf man thought, he would understand, he would figure out from the movement of his limbs, then he formulated his questions and also his responses to these questions. He thought that his eye will be able to really see and, and figure out in his mind what exactly he was trying to tell you. So he said, look at, look at what, what happened in the end. A 10 years friendship between the two was made in vain, broken. So. We would like to, of course, use our senses. These are given gift, God-given gift by Allah Almighty. Very important for us. Now, what could have done this uh, deaf man instead of really formulating, forming such questions in his mind and forcing himself, going all this trouble, he could have presented himself just as he is, as he was. Because you should be as you are. After all, the defect that you have is a trial from Allah Almighty. You should accept it as it is. And he went out of his, his normal course of life and he surmised some questions, then went to ask his, the well-being of his neighbor. Instead of doing that, he could have gone still to visit him, but just remain silent and show respect to him. Very presence of you in such a situation will be more effective than really going into such interaction, such communication, which resulted in a disaster. So, Mevlana says, deaf man has made an analogy and comparison according to his own reasoning and judgment. But was this judgment correct? No. The 10-year-long friendship was broken because of this wrong analogy, 
because of his uh, reliance on his senses. And therefore, when you would like to make an analogy between two things, Mevlana says you need to make sure that these two things are comparable. They have common denominators, denominators between the two. They are, there are commonalities that are shared by both. Sometimes certain people, certain scholars, intellectuals attempt to compare between the seen with the unseen. They make mistakes. The seen is the domain of reason. The unseen is the domain of the revelation. Therefore, senses and reason should be strengthened, strengthened and completed by the divine guidance, by the revelation. So, we are human beings, we have a physical body and also spiritual body. We have control over our, our physical body with our reason, but the communication between the two, with the reason and also with the revelation together. Therefore, we should not just rely on our senses and reason. We should seek divine guidance. Now, coming back to the story, instead of going visiting your sick friends, which we cannot do nowadays because of the circumstances, we are all in self-isolation, we are all retreat and seclusion in this beautiful month of Ramadan. But we can do one thing, pick up the phone, you can reach them by your words, by your comforting words. If you cannot still, another effective way to reach them, dua. Prayer, and in the absence of your brothers and sisters, prayer is also very effective, very efficacious. That's what we can do at least. In fact, the least we can do, but I think the most rewarding act we can do. And it will be the most uh, effective means to reach out all those who are in need. And again, another way of doing this, sending through other means and ways, our charities, our help. And of course, we should continue to pray for all the world to, to Allah Almighty to restore the whole world again back to the normal so that we can enjoy our social gathering, social life in the company of our family, friends, and nations. I wish you all a beautiful Ramadan. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon you. And may Allah Almighty keep us in good health. Assalamu alaikum.